Well, good evening and welcome back to Fire Pit Prayers. Uh, it's the last night of festival. Wow, how has this happened so quickly? Um, it's been a really special time uh, uh, and I hope you've brought lots of special memories. I hope you're going to take lots of special uh, energy and spirit filled stories uh, back with you to uh, wherever it is that you are uh, seeking to serve God and build the kingdom. Um, we shall, you shall go with our prayers, uh, but we're not quite done yet. We've got some fire pit prayers tonight uh, and then we'll be back in the morning uh, with some more Bible study and some uh, all age worship, uh, which we're all looking forward to. But but uh, tonight, uh, around the fireside, we'll gather as we have done uh, throughout festival for some prayers, some space to reflect on the day, some space to bring your own prayers. And we want to hear those prayers uh, in the comments as you uh, as you watch along. We want to, uh, you to share those, share them in emoji form, share them uh, uh, in whatever uh, words you can think of. Share just one word, maybe share a longer prayer. Uh, just as we've said uh, each night, just bear in mind that this is a public forum Forum, so don't share a story that isn't yours to share uh, or anything that you don't want to be uh, publicly available uh, on the internet. The fireside is a space where the spirit is at work and also where stories are shared. So we bring our stories to the Holy Spirit again uh, tonight gathered around the fireside. And uh, wherever you are uh, and however you're part of a Festival at Home. We want to thank you for your support for All We Can. We're the charity partner of Festival and uh, it's always great to work with our friends here uh, at Cliff College uh, and to feel connected with you all tuning in uh, all around the world and in different time zones and different places uh, and to feel you part of this community uh, where, even though you can't be physically sat here next to me uh, that we, we feel like we're sharing uh, this space together. All We Can is uh, an international development agency that's representing the church and o operating on behalf of the church around the world by committing to partnership uh, and partnership as a way of tackling poverty and breaking injustice. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit more about that work now and we're going to uh, jump over to Malawi uh, to hear a little bit from uh, some of our work there and get, give you the chance to hear the voices of some of the people who are involved in All We Can's work. So we welcome Malawi to the fireside. All We Can works together with talented people and organizations to unlock potential. In Malawi and other countries around the world, All We Can is working with communities affected by poverty, disasters and injustice. But what does potential look like? In marginalized and excluded communities, local needs are plenty, but so is local potential. All We Can works with vulnerable communities across the world, from supporting young mothers to access education, to helping communities become more resilient in the face of disaster. In times of disaster, as well as through long-term projects, All We Can works alongside local organizations meeting local needs and helping people flourish. Potential looks like Margaret, 18, a young mom returning to school to unlock her future. I am going to go to the center. I am going to go to the condo. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go all We Can helps women like Elena and her community apply their potential and become more resilient. I have been here for a long time for a long time. I have been here 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 for a long time. Even in Gakale Nyumba Zamalata, Gakale Zamaudu, Zimasasula and Ditu, Komano Titalandi of Bangiru Menu, Nduguyambano, Kumagri Sanchi, Ropanga Zachirenge, Dokuzara Gomitengo, Tidono Timitengo Jeta Yamba Kukula, De La Latu, Panopa Ibuino, Gakale Pepe Ibereman to Dwaj, Situ Kufutika Sutu Kudelankawa, Igungo Dusa Chilengalenga, Palibe Amena Kuda Lotu Mbangaya Sasuka. Potential looks like agricultural schemes, which can transform daily life 
and help families flourish. Yeah, for sure, there's a very big change when, as we started with them in 2017, we've gone inside the houses. There was totally no food. But this time, just because of this project now, from the money which they are selling here, some of them they have built good houses in the village. And they've bought uh, goats. They have goats, chickens, some pigs, and the others, even they've extended up to buy motorcycles, which they use to transport their clothes to markets. Unleashing potential helps end poverty. Join all we can and work with communities as they unlock their potential. Hopefully that just gives you a little glimpse into some of the amazing work that's happening uh, in Malawi and some of All We Can's absolute commitment to partnership as we walk alongside uh, organisations like CARD, where Charles is from, uh, to learn more about them, to let them lead, to let them set the, 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 the agenda uh, and we just work with them uh, and seek to support them, seek to offer some of the resources that are available to us here in the West uh, to enable that, that really great work to continue and that's happening in lots of places all around the world and if you've uh, tuned into Festival at Home and seen any of All We Can stuff, then hopefully uh, you've seen some of those stories over the last few days. Uh, and if not, do take a look over uh, at our website, at All We Can UK, uh, to go and find out a little bit more about what we're up to uh, and what some of the good things that are happening there um, and some of the things that we want you to be involved in and want you to, to help us support um, I'm really pleased that uh, tonight we're joined uh, virtually by the uh, across the medium of time and space uh, by one of my colleagues at All We Can, uh, Jez. Uh, Jez has been working with us for a few months now uh, and I'm really uh, enjoying getting to know Jez uh, and getting to hear some of his story uh, and some of the amazing things that God has done and is continuing to do in, in his life. Uh, and we're going to uh, go over to his fireside now. Um, he's in uh, uh, Woodland uh, somewhere near Bournemouth uh, and he's He's going to uh, just, just share with us a little bit of around the fire pit prayers space. Um, so over to you, Jez. Hello, welcome to fire pit prayer. My name is Jez from All We Can. And I was just driving through the forest to go to a place where I've been to so many times before. And even as a kid to build fires and hang out with my mates on, on our BMX bikes and just came across this amazing chimney fire pit. I'm just going to share it to you. And I was like, oh, what an amazing spot to stop and, and build a fire and, uh, and share some stuff with you today. So I'm going to build a fire and I'll be back in just a few moments. got the uh, fire going. Um, love making fire, it's just so much fun isn't it, it just takes me back to uh, when I was younger. Um, and yeah, I've got a story for you guys today and it's from the Bible, I hope that's okay. There's a quote from Mahatma Gandhi who said, you Christians look after a document that contains enough dynamite to blow all civilization to pieces, to turn the world upside down and to bring peace to a war-torn planet. 
yet you treat it as if it is nothing more than another piece of literature. And I'm a massive fan that as Christians and as followers of Jesus, that we need to seek the truth that he brings and offers us through the Bible and through, through the word of God. Uh, so today I want to share the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from Daniel chapter 3. And in that, they're these guys that are God's people, um, Israelites, who have been taken out of their own land and, and taken away from uh, Jerusalem by King ne Nebuchadnezzar and taken to the Babylonian Empire. And from there, King Nebuchadnezzar creates this golden image that he calls everybody to bow down to in, uh, in, in Babylon. So he, and he says that whenever you hear the noise of these musical instruments, you need to bow down to this golden image and, and worship it, essentially. And uh, from that place, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, uh, when they heard the noise of uh, the musical instruments, they refused to bow down because their affiliation to, to God, who, um, who, who they believe created them and who they worship, the God who the, we worship today, is more important to them than bowing down to, to a golden image. So they refused to do it. And so the, the kind of leaders of the time brought them before King Nebuchadnezzar. And as part of that, were, were asked again that if they didn't bow down to this image, that they'd be thrown into a fiery furnace. And they refused to. So what is the repercussion of that? That they got bound up and King Nebuchadnezzar was so frustrated with them that he made that he ordered the the guards to build a fire that was seven times hotter than it usually would be. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were thrown into that fire. But a strange thing happened then, that the people who were looking on saw four people walking about in the fire. And it says that the last person was as if it was a son of God. So after a while, they saw them moving around and the, the fire wasn't hurting them. So King Nebuchadnezzar says, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, come out of the fire. So they walked out of the fire and, and unhurt and they didn't even smell of smoke. And at that point, King Nebuchadnezzar said, uh, I put an, a, an, a, a, another edict out across the nation to say, you must worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. What a story, what a powerful story. And I believe that that um, person in the fire was a representation of Jesus, God with us, who rescued them and were faithful to them because they stood out and took a step of faith not to bow down to the, the desires of their culture and to the, what the leadership was saying at the time because it denied their faith in God. And there's an invitation, are you gonna be somebody who just goes with the flow? Are you gonna be set apart as Jesus invites you to live a life of courage, to live a life of love, to live a life of worship to him, not bowing down to the cultural norms and trying to fit in, but saying, you know what? I wanna follow God and follow him no matter what the cost. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the story in your word, God, and that encouragement to live a life of, of wholeness, of longing after your presence and a life of courage that says, you know what, I'm not going to deny you, but I'm going to follow you no matter what the cost. And God, I thank you that you call us, that you love us, that you empower us to do that by the power of your spirit. And God, would you be with us, each one of us today, as we try to live that out and to bring glory to your name. Amen. I think one final thought just to leave you with. Any one of those sticks in there or any piece of coal that is on a barbecue, if you remove it, it will burn out within like a couple of minutes. But you put them all together and they burn for ages. I think a lesson that we can learn from Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, there's three of them. Um, and a lesson from a fire that we can learn. That actually, if we stick together, that fire can burn longer and hotter. Thank you. So good to spend time with you. Have a really blessed day. Thanks, Jez. And hopefully that uh, is a helpful uh, story for us to, tonight as we sit around this space of story and spirit, this place 
of prayer and potential potential fulfilled which is what uh, all we can seeks to do all around the world and uh, even as the smoke seems to keep finding me no matter where uh, where I sit um, it's really good to share this space with you uh, and to feel connected with you all uh, as you you tune in to festival at home Tomorrow is Pentecost, and uh, if we've got an image of the Spirit as fire, which we've been talking about all week, then uh, tomorrow's uh, Pentecost story from, from Acts 2 is, uh, is the perfect place, isn't it, where we see the Spirit uh, encapsulated as tongues of fire coming down on those early disciples, giving birth to the church, setting off in motion the, the movement that we're all still part of today, the Jesus movement, the movement that is seeking to bring a little bit more light and hope and grace. And as we look at the flames, we think of those as that first Pentecost uh, and the exciting birth of the movement of the church uh, that gave gives rise to us being here today, the movement we're still part of today, the movement that seeks to bring Christ into the world and to bring a little bit of Christ's hope uh, to, to people's lives, the, the hope of resurrection, the hope of new life. And even as we uh, submit to God's rule and reign, so too we believe in the principles of Jubilee, the principles of of the world made new. So Pentecost is the time in which the church began again, a new fresh expression of church, the freshest expression of church as the spirit descended uh, and a bunch of pioneers were, were born. People, uh, those early disciples who changed the course of human history by starting a Jesus movement, by nourishing the Jesus movement, by bringing it uh, to life in their context. And this is our chance to do the same. We'll go away from uh, festival at home. We'll get back into our normal rhythms uh, of life over the next few days. This sees the chance of this Pentecost to tear up the script uh, around what it has to look like. If some of the older, older models aren't working for you, if uh, you're tired uh, and worn down and the spirit is not uh, alive with the, the heat of the fire uh, that's starting to just um, burn my shoulder a little bit, uh, if if you're not alive with the heat of that fire then maybe it's time to flip the script to let the let the fire descend again and change what we're doing do something new something different something exciting become a fresh expression uh, of church where you are become a pioneer uh, in whatever context you find yourself be a disciple because uh, when we find fresh ways pioneering ways of sharing the gospel we're just doing what the church has always done and will always continue to do. And what better time to do that than the Pentecost season. So uh, over the course of the uh, Jubilee Bank holidays, I hope you've soaked up some uh, extra energy. I hope you've found a, a renewed uh, sense of what it is to, to sit around the fire. And now you can use that fuel uh, to, to fuel the fires where you are, the fires of God's spirit and God's kingdom uh, alive. We get to see that uh, all we can. We get to see uh, new little fires of goodness and of the good news uh, of Jesus Christ, the good news that is every person's potential fulfilled, uh, coming to life in new communities and new places all the time. Uh, we've heard some of those stories, haven't we? Uh, uh, as we've gathered around this space uh, tonight and across uh, many of the, the evenings during Festival at Home, as well as uh, much of the other, the other content and the other videos that hopefully you've been able to to tune into. We, we hold on to hope that the future is better than the past, that the best is yet to come, and that God is journeying with us on our next steps together. We're delighted uh, to get the chance at all we can to work with our friends in the evangelism and growth team uh, of the Methodist Church uh, and uh, to get the chance to explore together as we have done uh, across this uh, this festival uh, weekend to explore together the way in which justice and evangelism are not separate ideas. They're not two sides of a spectrum and you're supposed to sign up to one or the other. They are the gospel. Uh, and when they are integrated, when mission is integrated, then the gospel is truly alive and burning uh, in people's hearts and communities and minds. And we uh, just want to kind of, uh, before we have a, a brief moment of prayer, just want to uh, share with you a little video 
that uh, are, are we made uh, along with our friends at the Evangelism and Growth Team. Um, they take all the credit for this, uh, but this is just a, uh, a wonderful kind of invitation for us to get out and about, to tear up the script uh, around what it means to be church and to really commit to our local communities and through uh, organisations like All We Can and the kind of work we're trying to do to commit to our global community too. Um, so let's, uh, let's play the, the video and watch the little poem uh, and then we'll use that as a time uh, of prayer. Let us pray each and every day. Let us pray as a way to say that we don't believe that life is somehow meaningless, feelingless, healingless. And you're welcome, whatever you're dealing with. But what if there is a great big unless? Just waiting for a fearless few to leave behind the pew, talk to the folks in the checkout queue. Who knew? They are ready to listen anew, to hope along with you. So open up and listen out. It's time to get out and about. God's calling you out and about. God's already out and about. This is not about standing on the corner to shout or sandwich boards or hordes of people flooding in on Sunday. It's about having a fun day. <laughs> Celebrate together, whatever the weather. Welcome the stranger, not because you wish to change her, but simply discover she's an angel. So, open the doors, because it's been too long since we opened the doors. The hinges are rusty, but the people are thirsty, oh so thirsty, for the Spirit of God. It's not so big, oh so scary. We can all pray, we can all say hi to the guy next door, because it's where the story starts. So open your hearts, and take the good news out and about. Amen. And thanks, folks. That's us signing out from Fire Pit Prayers. It's been great to uh, share with you over the course of the last few days. And uh, thank you for praying with us uh, around the fire uh, here and connecting with the fire wherever you are. May that fire continue to burn in your hearts and minds in the days and weeks to come. And may the grace and the peace of the Lord, who is Christ, go with you. Amen. Amen.